So I did a really big piece of an iris a few years ago, back in 2015, so quite some time ago. But uh, it was in a particular place where the dust and the weather and whatever, anyway, is completely destroyed. Um, it's not a good place to keep my art. Um, so I think I want to do it again. So what I'm looking for is an image. I actually have a few images that I took, so I will put them into the reference photos, but for now I'm just gonna go online and look a few of these. Now, what I'm looking for is a feeling. I don't want to do an exact replica. I don't do a lot of exact replicas, not really, not so much anymore. And certainly not, um, not for you guys, not for class, because it takes so, so, so long, and I just don't have the time uh, to work like that, um, like for this. So here are a few examples. And what do we want to do? I like the blue in this one. Um, I find irises to be really fun. They're a really fun example of a painting because uh, they're just, they're kind of flowing as long as you have the color relatively right and maybe the general shape, you can kind of do whatever you want. And I really like that about irises because it leaves a lot of interpretation, a lot of room for play. So this is a very standard, very traditional kind of iris. So is that. Now, let me grab my sketchbook. And we'll just roughly figure out how to draw it first. So, somewhere in here, there'll be a page that's empty. Okay, so an iris typically has um, a large leaf coming to the front. And it can be any real shape you want it to be. Um, it depends if it's bending in or bending out, how that shape is gonna look. In the center, you'll have your yellow. This is the bearded part. And then going up, you're normally going to have two pieces that go this way, okay? One piece that might cover the back, so it might not be visible straight through. And then this one is the same. So there's actually three up here. Uh, this, they can be quite bumpy on the edges. And then the same thing down here. So we'd end up with three down here. And that's about what the iris looks like. And then you put in um, a stalk and they tend, to, that would be up here, would be the, the rounder part. We're not gonna see that so much. And if you want, you could put in a bud like so. Now let's bring the bud up here because of the, um, because of the leaf. So we're gonna go up and up, and up again, and maybe up again. That's the general sketch. Now I would like to actually use my image going this, or I'd like to use my paper going this way, but um, it's not gonna work because there's just not enough room and I have to make sure that you guys can see. So what I think I'll do is I'm gonna fold and rip the paper, and then I'll have two and it will be smaller. How I do that, I literally just fold it in half, move my coffee so I don't spill it, and come back. Now I normally stand up, but let's see if I can do this without standing. This is a Logan System ruler. They're really good. Um, it's got a really thin side and a fat side. This is for making Paspa 2s. And back when we had a crazy photo studio in Germany, uh, Paspa 2s was something we did a lot of. This is 140 or 300 gram, 140 pounds, 300 gram cold press. Um, 11 by 14 originally, and it is a Fabriano, is the paper I'm using today. This paper is hot press, and it is hot press arches, and I have pulled it off a roll, a really large, huge roll, um, which I think is 11 meters long. It's in a different room right now. Um, so I pull it off and I rip it out. So that's what I typically use when I'm using the small pieces like this. So it's gonna be a little different, but we need something for um, doing our tests. Let's get something fun like this um, two-part brush. And let's bring out uh, the Da Vinci Sable. This is um, Squirrel. 
This one, my... Oh, it's getting windy. Uh, the markings are starting to come off. This is a size 4 Da Vinci Maestro. This is a size 6. And this is also Da Vinci size 5. And it is series 5519. Here's my mop as well because I love this brush. Da Vinci Feet Gris Pure. And this is series 418, I think. 418, yes. Um, I got a few questions last time in last week's tutorial. And they were... Uh, what kind of paper, what kind of pens, uh, sorry, pencils, etc. was I using? That was right off the bat. So all this information is always on my uh, my posts uh, that you can find on Patreon. If you want to know anything specific that I don't actually mention here, you can also send me a message saying, hey, you forgot that, and I'll add it in without any problem. Um, but yeah, just in case you're not sure. Also, I do try to tell you what these details are during the tutorial. So um, even though I don't do it right up at front because I don't always like doing it up at front. So I'm going to use a blue watercolor pencil just like last time and I'm going to just gently sketch. So I know that I want my middle part to be about here and I think I want my top to be somewhere up here and then I want the bottom not too long because I want a little bit of room for the stem. So if we were actually to start down here I'm gonna go up and down, make lots of little hills here in order to, I wanna keep it fat, um, in order to represent the bumpy edges. Keep it fat and then bring it all the way up. Same thing here. Keep it fat, bring it up. It's got a little curve at this point, and then a bump. Coming down to the other one, another bump. Coming down to this one. Let's do a little underside here so you can really see what's going on. Again, going up. Uh, do the underside here as well. Okay, so this is the darker blue and this is like in the shadow on both of them. Here and here. If I don't like that, I'll just bring it out later. Um, and then coming up here, we're going to go around. Make lots of little bumps. You want it to be nice and bumpy. Going up, going down, going up, lots of bumpy again, going down. Now this one needs to come in and meet at the same point. That's kind of important. We're going to have our yellow in the middle. So to represent that, we could drop our yellow here. And we'll probably have something else that third piece. Let's say we can see that a little bit throughout. Okay, here we've got a little bit of directional lines and voila! Now for the bottom, now guys this is not going to be um, botanical study. I'm just having a little bit of fun. We'll see how good it gets but it's going to be loose. Okay, we're thinking loose, impressionistic, lily, purple, beautiful, or sorry, iris, purple, <laughs> bluish purple iris, maybe more blue than purple because blue is my favorite color, blue and a gray. Now sticking with this, now imagine that this is the core, so what I've just done is wrong because this brings it up here. I need to turn this just a little bit so it looks like it's going in the right direction. And then we wanted to do that little extra flower thing here. And maybe we want to bring this one up here. Now, if I was using pencil, I could erase. That would be easier. Bring it up here. And then we've got the blue on the top. So we're going up. Okay, this is kind of how it unfolds. But again, this is just my own impression of this. And down here we have this up, over. At the moment I'm not even sure if it has a double king here, but I'm going to put it in anyway because I think it's interesting. And then this comes, and it actually comes out of that. They kind of part and it comes out. Okay, so there we go. Look at that. We're getting somewhere. 
Okay, so we've got our brushes. We're not gonna do any penciling. I'm gonna sign my name just so throughout the entire video. My name is always on here. It kind of seems somewhat important occasionally. Okay, now I need some water, which today is way over there. And we need some paint. So let's see, let's use some cerulean blue, which is this one. And before we start, let's spray this. Spray these blues as well. Okay, and we're going to drop in some water. So starting in the court, this is just how I'm doing it. I'm gonna start in the court, I'm gonna work my way out. You don't have to. Also, I'm laying down the water first, and then I'm gonna drop the color and just let it move. The one thing I do wanna do is make sure that when I lay down the water, I lift up all these pencil crown markings, or at least most of them. And I can always come back later and work them into the piece. So I'm just laying this down. And I wanna leave some highlights. Oh, right, there's also a little white in here. So this part is blue, and that's white, and then there's yellow. There's yellow right here, and a little bit here and here, just so I don't forget. Okay, so I'm gonna put in my water Now, for this one, I think what I want is for the water to kind of be everywhere, and we'll see how it goes. Drop in a lot of paint and see how it moves around. I think that would be fun. So first I'm going to pull off a little bit, give it a little more texture. Then let's come back with a color. And we said we're going to use some deep cerulean blue. Now the base here is the is darkest, right? So let's drop in some color down here and we're just gonna let it move. We need a lot more color than that. That's definitely not enough. So let's dry the brush a little bit. Pick up another. Now, what is this that I just picked up? Okay, this is turquoise phaleo blue. And stir it, and I'm gonna drop that in. So this becomes a two-tone. Now, I have a tutorial on how to do a two-tone, and I will um, put that in here um, on the Patreon post so you guys can if you're watching this there, then you can go also watch the two-tone tutorial. Okay, we're just flicking it around, we're dancing it, we're getting it to move. Now, remember where your darker parts are, right? And there's a lot of water in here, so I can really get it to move if I want it to. I'm gonna come back with something a little darker. This is indigo. And I'm just going to drop a little bit into the bottom. I'm gonna suck up a little bit of that water, it's a tiny bit too much. If you guys have watched the tutorial on how to control the water, you would know that we need to make that perfect sheen. And in this case, I didn't do that. I went ahead and dropped it in really early, which is okay because I end up with a pool and I want the pool to just flood and play and move. But, um, but I need to lift some of that water back out before it dries, before it starts to dry. Otherwise, I will end up with uh, runbacks, and I don't want runbacks on the iris. 
Okay, so we're doing the same thing over here. You probably noticed on the group tutorial that um, most of the time is spent getting your foundation done. The final details can go quite quick, unless it's a lot of line work, which can be a lot of fun too. I really like doing line work. There, this is almost like, um, like an iris that opens up into the universe. Does that make sense? So you're looking into the iris, but you're actually looking into um, to space, into, into the sky. It's cool. I like that. Okay, let me clean my brush. Come back with just a little bit of water. And I want to pull this. This is going to do a few things. Can you tell how it's actually pulling the paint? But it's also going to uh, blend the edges. And there's a whole bunch of tutorials on how to blend colors. If you guys are interested in knowing more about blending, I actually put together a playlist called Blending Watercolor by Scarlett Damon. There. Yeah, so I want these fingers. I think we need a little more here. So I don't want to touch any of this. Um, you know what, let's do this one. Let's come over here and play with this. Okay, so again, let's just add our water in. And just to make it more interesting, let's add in the dark color right here. And we'll just let it blend from the bottom. And let's do another one here. Now I'm not going to do the middle one just yet because I don't want them to run into each other. It'll kind of lose the effect. They've got a lot of water in there, which is great because it's lifting up these pencil lines. And then I want to, with now a damp brush, just pull this extra water out because it will be too much. I want to control it a little bit. And coming back again with the indigo. Starting at the bottom and just dropping it in really, really thick and watching it move. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, it's gorgeous. Gorgeous. Now they will not stay like this. This is not what it's gonna look like when it dries because it's gonna mix in. You can see that as we're working over here, it's really mixing. It's gonna be a beautiful blend, but it won't be as magical as that moment when you initially put that water in. Watercolor always dries lighter and it always blends out. So um, I don't actually know. Uh, I guess unless you took a photo while it was wet, that would be the best option to really try to preserve that, um, those, that beautiful finger look, which would work. Okay, I'm adding a little more dark around here. Because like I said before, if this is going to be some kind of space or nebula or something, then looking through the iris into the universe. That sounds cool. Looking through the iris into the universe. I like that. Let's do this one. I want to avoid that. Or maybe we can come into the green because this is going to be really close and I don't want to work that close yet. Oh no, wait. This is all white up here, isn't it? Okay. Since that's white anyway, I'm going to consult my, my sketch. So yeah, we've got the yellow in the middle and then we've got the white bits underneath that. So it's like this part is yellow and this part is white. So let's come way down here. I'm gonna leave that white as paper white and I can tell that it's there, I can see it. It's getting pretty dark in here. So, um, I'm going to have to turn a light on soon. Um, see if I can see it for long. And if I bounce my brush along here, I'm going to get more of a raw edge, which in this case will look really nice. And you'll see what I mean. Um, just a sec. So I'm going to 
dry off my brush just a little bit, clean and dry my brush, grab some um, indigo and let's do the opposite. Let's add the indigo here. Right up into the edges. Okay. Now going really close without touching. Because if we touch, it'll bleed. But what do you think? Isn't that beautiful? I'm going to add a few more dots. So I'm dotting and I'm dragging my brush at the same time to and then lift to get these little poofs of paint. And there's no water up here, so it won't work. Let's do the green. Go down here. And I'm just using the paint that's already on here. I'm just using water and I'm activating the watercolor pencil to give a foundation color. And also, so you can see where the water is, and so we can activate that so we can kind of get it to lift and pull out or move off. Okay, so now that it's there, um, I'm actually going to decide where my sun is. And I'm going to lift off a bit. Okay, so this is a little more random. All right, now what color should we do? Let's do, so here are our color options. I am tempted to go with a hooker's green or a permanent green olive. Sap green is probably really good for the light, for the highlights, or a may green or a combination of the two. We could make our own green using a lemon yellow, like a cadmium lemon yellow or a cadmium, which isn't in here, it's on this other palette, or, and mix that with an indigo. That would mean that the indigo is everywhere and we're just adding the yellow. So we're not adding so many other colors, which would actually make for a more harmonious painting, harmonious painting if we use the same indigo color as our base. So that is a good idea. Okay, so now let's do this here. Pick up some water and we'll just make our own green. So we've got our indigo. That's a lot of indigo though. Um, oh, you know what we did this last week? We have, we use this one. And this would be the green that I'm talking about. So we had our cadmium yellow in the middle and we had, we added our indigo to it and it came out with this beautiful color. You guys see that? So we can start over. We're going to take some cadmium yellow from here. I have to activate it. These are tube paints. Um, they come in a tube and I squirt them in here and then I let them dry and then I can come back and use them forever and ever and ever. I just want to add the cadmium yellow here and they're also schminky. They're schminky paints. 99.9% .9 of the paints that I have are either schminky paints or they are Winsor & Newton. And, and then of course um, the paints that I make myself are from minerals and things that I have found and ground. And eventually I will do a tutorial um, on how I do that. So we have our cadmium yellow and we have our indigo blue. We're just going to take a tiny drop of this, mix it in. Actually, we can do it both. We can put it in here and put it over there. Which is kind of cool because now this one is a darker yellow. This one is a yellowy blue, very greeny blue. Okay, so using those two colors. And of course, our paper has dried. So I'm going to take the paint off. Um, 
come back with a tiny bit of water. Of course, I don't know how much of that paint actually came off there. And this is just to break up the wet, so it's going to be more interesting. Then picking up some of this green, I'm going to drop that in here. On the underside, because in this particular moment, um, I've decided that the, the bottom, the edge is going down towards the ground. There's nothing reflecting on it, so it's going to be the darker side. This is not always the case. Sometimes there's a table reflecting light. Um, sometimes there's another plant reflecting some light. So I'm just dropping this in here. It's not a lot either. It's pretty watered down. I'm dropping it in and I'm letting it move. And then let's pick up some of this. A little bit of that cadmium indigo green we just made. And we're going to bring that across the top edge just a little bit. Just tap it together a bit. This is kind of like a two-tone, but only from one side. Okay. And then here. And I'm not sure, should these be straight or should they, should they be bumpy? Okay. Yeah, so another comment I got yesterday was how, how come your work looks the way it does and how come when I try to do it, I cannot, I cannot achieve what you're doing and I don't remember I'm sorry I don't remember who answered the question but your answer was wonderful the answer is practice 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 they say that you require a thousand hours to do something well I am not saying that what I do is well by any means there are so many artists that are so much better than me but I do hope that you like what I do because obviously you're watching it um, yeah, practice is the thing. The more practice you do, the more your personal style will come out, the more confident you'll become, the more comfortable you'll become with the medium. And it doesn't have to be watercolor. It can be anything. It can be playing a violin. It can be um, painting in oil, it, it, anything. The more time, the more practice, the better, the better you're going to get, right? That's what it always comes down to. So let's move this up just a little bit. So you guys can see the bottom and I'm gonna do the same thing here now I really like this splotchy thing we're gonna to have to come back and clean this up too because I have the pencil lines but I like that a lot I might add a little more detail in there later so I want to do something similar over here I'm just gonna I haven't added water yet so this is just wet and wet I'm just I'm oh, sorry wet on dry I'm just gonna tap in this darker edge which doesn't necessarily need to be dark at all Okay, and then coming back with a wet brush, so this would be a blending, it doesn't look very clean. Okay, I'm just going to run this down the edge. In order to Gonna soften that and give us a nice glow. So we can add a little more here if we want to, just to bring the two together. Okay, I like that. Now coming back in with a slightly damp brush, I'm just gonna lift out some of this pool because that's gonna be too much. It's gonna create a run back. It's not, it was the right color, but it was not, uh, you can see it starting here. The right color, but um, not concentrated enough. So the answer to that, I'm gonna pull my brush through here so that this little run back goes away because that was too much water that was now pushing into here. Just lift out that blue, add some of this green to more indigo. 
Um, and also, I'm going to use my two-tone Fancy Wancy brush, just for the fun of it. And we're going to pull this little line this way. It's not working at the moment. It's got it's got some paint in there. Okay. All right. So um, sometimes when a brush is really new, even though you've used it a few times, when it dries, the dumb Arabic will dry solid or hard again, and you have to work at it. Never break or snap the brush. Always put it in water and just let it do it. Let it uh, softly come back to life for you. Or gently come back to life. So I'm going to draw some lines. Now I realize this is not important, but I think it would be nice. Once we get into this section, it's um, it's a little too wet still. So we can add some more later. And I'll also just take my time and add a few lines in here. Um, maybe here. Just enough to slightly define what's going on. This one looks like it goes this way. Okay, and then moving up, actually let's do a little bit of work on this as well. These lines are going to be really faint. They're not going to stand out very much because it's the same color. And I'm going to make sure that this edge is actually straight. Whoops, don't want that green up there. There we go. Did we get that? Okay, guys, I love doing line work, but I wanted to make this a relatively quick one. Okay. And then way up here, quick and impressionistic, right? Um, let's add a few lines up here, something simple, and a few of these ones. And I do like the little white spaces. Okay, so this is dry, but this is not dry. This is dry, but this is not dry. What I do think I need to do is turn the light on though. It's getting really dark. Uh, the sun is going down and it is just beautiful. I can see the sunset out of the front of these windows. So I'm gonna turn on this big dust light. This will completely change how everything looks. Oh, the texture in here is just perfect. I like that. I even like the little white spots. So we need this to dry. Um, I don't have the heater on under my desk, which might be why it's drying a little slowly. 
because it's kind of a noisy heater and I don't want you guys to uh, have to listen to it. However, I'm becoming really, really cold, so maybe I will go warm up, turn the heater on under the desk, let the room warm up again. Also, I'm going to touch this little spot. Suck that out. And this too, because we don't need that big pool of water. It's just uh, going to create problems later. There, that'll also help the whole thing dry a little quicker. And up here, yep, we still have. Okay, so I did change this. I just lifted some of that out. So I'm gonna, this is still yellow. Come back in here. And just do a little bit of line work, which probably won't stay, but um, I want to drop in more of this so we get more of this beautiful effect down here. This is a run back, but it's okay. It almost looks like a run up because they're kind of moving up into the water. Just using this side of the brush, just pulling it down. Okay, and then I'm going to come back with something else and kind of work this in a bit. Because I want more blue here. What do we do next? Shall I pause or shall I keep going? Let's just quickly keep going. So we're going to add some water here. This is the other side, although in the world of Impressionism, you're not going to be able to see it so much. And we've got the white there. And then we've got this beautiful, potentially beautiful blue part once it's in there. To go all down around the bake base here. Okay, so I'm going to do the whole thing, drop in the color, and then I'll kind of redefine the color later. So if we start here, now I know this is not exactly how it's supposed to be, but right now it's just beautiful. So we'll see if we actually want to fix it or not to make it look more correct. And then under here, we've got another one. And I have to check, make sure that it indeed still a little wet. We do a little stippling and uh, scumbling. Stippling is dots and scumbling is dancing, little twiggly wiggles. We go in all directions. And also, if you notice, my brush is almost vertical. This is on purpose because it helps me control, but it also helps me uh, achieve that nice bumpy, uh, bumpy look where I kind of don't want to control it. Oh, look at that. It's five o'clock and the heater's turned on. I have timers for everything in this house. The heaters all turn on at different times. The grow lights turn on by themselves. Even the vacuum turns on by itself. 
Which is not always a good thing because it turns on at 9 in the morning. But sometimes I don't want to listen to a vacuum at 9 in the morning. Uh, but the kitty does. <laughs> that silly little kitty gets so excited. Every morning she sits and waits for the vacuum to wake up. And then the two of them run around the house. <laughs> and she lies in front of it and tries to get it to go over her. It's the cutest thing. She puts her paws under it and she totally doesn't care. And the vacuum will just come up to her and it will it'll vacuum around the cat. It's just hilarious. Okay, so how's that? That's pretty cool. Now this is not correct because this is the underside. So we're gonna have to fill it in with something else. But for now, it's really, really pretty. Which is where we have to decide, do we want to fill it in with something else or do we just want to keep it looking so pretty? Okay, so that's side one. Side two, we're going to um, do a similar thing. Let's start with this little guy down here. This is the bend over on the other side. There's a little bit of green in that brush. And that puddle is way too big. So, just so we don't have to wait for it to dry, I'm gonna remove it. Dry off my brush and put a little less water down. Uh, again, we're using indigo. This whole piece is done with indigo and what was the other color? Indigo and cerulean blue. There's a little bit of cerulean blue in here. Both from Schminky. So let's paint this in. I'm going to do a little point so I can get those pretty little dots at the end. I'm going to do little points of uh, dots. Dappity, like, uh, what am I trying to say? Um, Pointillism. So I want to do a little pointillism in here, just kind of dot, 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 in order to get more of a bumpy edge. And this line I don't like. I think this should be the underleaf. That should be the overleaf. Oh, I gotta think about that for a while. How does, no, wait, wait, this line goes here and that line goes up there. Okay. So between that is going to be open. So, and then this is all white in here, a little bit of blue up the back. Now I'm not going too close, I don't want to touch that. I just want to activate these little lines. It is kind of helpful because you guys can almost see where the, where the water is. Right? Um, and then this section is actually part of this. So this little piece here, I don't like this raw edge, this line, so I'm just going to wiggle my brush gently across it and that will activate the paint that's there and help move that line around. And then for this stuff, I'll come back with a clean nuts. That's the key. Let's clean this. So my water is getting pretty dirty, so okay, it's clean now. So I'll have to clean my water in a sec, but I'm gonna come back with a clean brush and whoops. Okay, before that goes too far, let's just tap it off. This is gonna be blue, maybe, possibly should kind of be blue. We want to pull that bit down, which doesn't seem to look like it needs to be pulled at all anymore. There. Ah, yes, that's what we were doing. We were pulling this. Okay. Let's take a tiny bit of indigo. And again, I'm just scumbling. Now, you just saw me dampen that paper, put some, some water on it, so you can see how this edge is kind of um, blending out. 
And if it's not, I'll come back. Okay, it's starting to look more like an orchid. The way that this is, has this under edge, looks like it's rounding out, um, which is really pretty. And we can emphasize that a little bit by putting a tiny little bit of indigo way down here. I'm sure you guys know that I love my line work. So let's do some of that here. Now that this is dry, I can go right up next to it. So let's do the same thing, just to bring these all together. Let's do the same thing down here. I'm gonna start here. I hope you guys can see this. And I want to pull from this one into where I think it's gonna go. Okay, and then we've got this one way over here, so let's do the same thing here. I'm not exactly staying with the, the original blue line, which is totally okay. Um, and I actually want to bring this one up and then down a little bit more, just because I feel like it'll make more sense. Okay, then way in here, we've also got a lecture line. And I'm going to add some lines here, just to kind of bring it together. I don't know if this is going to work. I just like doing it. Yeah, looks pretty good. Um, and down here, now we have the yellow, and then we have to do that back blue, but we won't do that quite yet. And we also have to do the side blue. Mind you, we don't really have to do any of it. We can stop anywhere. Okay, so with this line I'm going to add some water which will activate some of this edge here. Now, 
Hi, you're stepping on my painting. Come here. Come here. You want to watch? Okay, okay. Now. What's wrong? Gonna bring this back into oneness with the rest of the piece. There we go. Maybe a little bit more. I'll just activate this little bit of blue in here. Okay, and then here's the big moment. We have to add this yellow somehow because these guys always have yellow, even though I don't really like yellow. So let's just get it over with. Stick it in here. Try not to make it too blue. Okay, coming back with water. I'm going to just touch around the outsides. There's a little blue line in the middle. That should not have been there. But it's okay. I'm gonna move it to mostly fill that space. Here we have the same little blue line. I'm just lifting it because this is the pencil. So by rubbing the paper very gently, I'm able to lift that pencil line. Tap some more yellow into the core. And then let's add some water around here so that it kind of blends up and out. Let me do something about this little line here. There we go. Okay, and then the last little bit, well, there's two last bits, isn't there? There's this one. I forgot about this one. I'm just getting that water perfect, which you can see because of the pencil. And then I'm going to drop in just a little bit of the blue, same blue. Kind of move it around and let it blend and it's in the middle so I think having a little bit of white on the top and bottom 
to kind of define it is kind of neat because it's kind of a reoccurring theme all the way through here. And then this yellow is still wet. I'm going to activate this blue. Maybe leave the little gap. And that's for the fun of it. Let's come back with the cerulean blue. Or what do we no, it was phaleo blue. But not a lot. Just a just a little bit. Same down here. And here. And here. Okay, did we miss anything? Uh, I think that's a pretty good iris. That is just it's slightly impressionistic, uh, slight realism, not real realism, you know. It looks like an iris, but it's kind of fun. Um, now, I'm going to let it dry for a while, and I would play with it. I would add more dark in here because it's dried. I do this, don't I? Get it all perfect. And then I come back and I play with it just to bring out more of that edge and also over here These are like the final glazes, okay? Just tuck that in And then I'm gonna drop in a darker shade Same thing. It's just a thicker amount of paint Hmm, and I feel like this needs more. Originally, also I had drawn this to be a little bigger. It just doesn't feel right. Also, I'm not thrilled with this.
There we go. It's a little more solid. So as though the light is going through the petal, but you're not looking at a second petal. And I'm kind of happy with it. I really like, I mean, let's talk about what we like, right? I like this in the middle. This is really pretty. Um, uh, this part I'm not so happy with. It could do with more. Really the whole thing could do with a lot more, but I am happy with that. And I do think it looks like an orchid. I'm very happy with the, the line work down here on the bottom. Um, and yeah, and the, the bud could do with more, this could do, but overall it's kind of, it's a fun piece and I hope that the tutorial and what I taught you and how I taught you to do this, um, is more important than the final outcome. So we can just imagine that we did a big splotch of nothing on a page and, um, and in the meantime I showed you guys how to blend and how to pull the colors, how to dance the colors, how to get those little fingers everywhere. Um, how to do line work, how to work with blooms, etc, etc. I hope that that is helpful. I hope you find this helpful. And, uh, and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Toodaloo, guys!